Hello everyone, it's nice to see you and I'm here to teach you some more about Montessori this morning. Now, what we're talking about is freedom. Freedom is a big factor of a Montessori classroom, Montessori setup, whether it's at home or whether it's in your school. There's this huge misconception, you know, when you talk to people and you mention the word Montessori, those who don't know much about it will say to you, oh Montessori, that's the kind of classroom or the environment where children are just doing whatever they want, whenever they want. And that's right, it's true. Children are doing what they want, whenever they want. But one thing you must remember is that it is purposeful activity. They are not running around a while, they're not getting up to doing anything that doesn't have a real purpose. Whatever's happening in this environment is done with intent, with choice, and it's constructive. We're giving our children freedom. The golden words that we use at home, or even in our schools, are freedom within limits. That's what we as adults know, that we're giving our children freedom within limits. Now, all of us live that kind of life. We live a free life, we have freedom, but we all have rules, right? The rules are the limits to our freedom. I'm a grown adult, all right, and I have the freedom to go out, to do the things the way I want to, but there's certain limits. I know there's a certain time I have to be home. I have to make sure that, you know, my house is stocked up, my fridge is stocked up for my three hungry children. Those are the rules that I have freedom with. The very same goes for the children in our classroom. We have rules that we abide by, that we follow within this classroom, but they are rules that we give them with understanding. It's different from a conventional sit uh, situation, a conventional classroom where the teacher says, you can't run, you cannot talk in a loud voice, you can't do this and you can't do that. We handle it very differently. The rules are put forward always in a positive way. So, when we take a piece of material, we need to put it back on the shelf. When we are in this classroom, we walk. We use indoor voices or we so use soft voices. And every time we give them, we offer a certain rule, we put forward a certain rule, we always tell them why. There's a reason why. Is it, in, it isn't just a dictatorship, or oh, you have to do this, this is the way things are done. No, we give them a reason why. So, we discuss with the children. Why do you think it's a good idea for us to only walk in the classroom? Do you think it could be dangerous if we run? And the children tell us why. It all comes from them. They tell us, oh, if we run, we might bump into something. We could fall down. We could break something. And then we say, so then it's a good idea for, always, for us to always walk in the classroom, isn't it? So it's coming from them. And when you have understanding why I have to follow a certain rule, it's easy to follow, it's easier to follow, it takes time still to implement, but it's easier for them to follow because there's a reason. We are all like that, not just children. So the same thing that we expect to have reasons for our rules, they need the same respect. So some of the rules that we do have uh, are that when we take a piece of material, we always use a mat because that defines our space. Um, when we take material, we must put it back before taking another one. We handle our materials with respect. We handle them gently. We return them the way that we took them. Um, we uh, are, must speak in soft voices so that our friends are not disturbed. And we walk in the classroom just as I mentioned to you. So I'm telling you about the limits of freedom, but then what kind of freedom are we giving the child? Well, they have the freedom of choice. Think back to when you were growing up. Did anybody ever give you a choice in school? I remember teachers streaming in the class and then going out and telling us exactly what we had to do, when we had to do it, and how we had to do it, for how long. So we were completely controlled. But here, children come in and they have a choice of a whole classroom of things to choose from. And they can pick what they want to do and spend as much time as they need for how long they need to work with that material. Sometimes I get parents who will ask me and come and say to me, you know, I don't know what to do. Or teachers say this sometimes, my child is just sitting with the pink tower, she doesn't want to try anything else. 
but that's what she needs. We're giving her that freedom to use it as long as she needs to till she gets that satisfaction. Remember something, if a child is doing something repetitively, that means it's giving them satisfaction. The minute she's bored, she's going to walk away from it. We give children the freedom to move again. Think about it when you were growing up. We were never allowed to move when we needed to. We had to sit. When the teacher said move, we moved. When she said sit, we sat. But that's not how children work. That's not their nature. Their nature is to run, their nature is to touch, their nature is to move about. That is how they were built. And so in this classroom, there is movement inbuilt into everything. They have they to have pick up each one of these rods or the prisms and cubes and walk back and forth. They're not bound to a chair until somebody tells them they can move. If they have the need to move, they will move. When they want to sit in one's place and work, they can sit in one place and work. Remember that movement is the nature of a child. It's just like an animal. You have a lion, his nature is to run wild. And the minute you control that lion and cage him, he's going to go wild. He will get angry, right? So why do we do that to children? Why are we going against their nature and telling them you can't move, you cannot touch, when that is how they were made? When we curb a young child's movement, it upsets them, it agitates them, they sometimes throw tantrums, sometimes they go completely silent. It doesn't work for them, that's not the way they were made. So they have the freedom in this classroom to move. Children in this classroom, in a Montessori environment, are given the freedom to progress at their own pace. We don't, you know, force children to complete a certain activity within a particular time frame, like how we had in school. We're given 15 minutes to do a certain workbook or a certain task. Here, we, we understand that, and everybody understands, that children are individuals, they're unique, they're not the same as each other. So everybody should be given as much time as he needs to complete a task. So no pressure to finish in a certain time frame. Have the freedom to progress at your own pace. Children are very safe in this classroom. They have a freedom from danger. This is a classroom where everything is scaled to the child's size. So they have the freedom to move around here and not be afraid that they might bump into something or there's something they cannot reach or they might hurt themselves. Even in our own homes, our homes are not structured that way that we can absent ourselves and let our children explore freely. We'd be afraid, oh, maybe he'll knock over the vase, maybe he'll bump his head into the corner of the table. But a Montessori environment should never be like that. The child should have the freedom to explore in a very safe way, to be free from danger of injuring himself. So with this freedom that we give children, there is so much they can achieve. They grow in self-confidence. They learn to become self-disciplined. They learn to work with something and learn from their own mistakes and grow in that way, understanding better how things work. So freedom is a very valuable component of a Montessori setup, whether you're doing it at home or whether you're doing it in school. So for those of you who are, of course, in school, we as teachers set it up for you. Um, but for those of you who are doing this at home, all right, and you want to run and implement Montessori the right way for your children at home, it's important to keep these factors in mind. Your setup may not be complete yet, but you can start small. Start by giving children the freedom to choose, even if it's something as simple as their clothing in the morning. The worst thing that could happen is it doesn't match. My nephew, uh, he chooses his own clothes and I can't tell you how many days he will wear superhero clothes when he's given the choice to choose his own clothes. And it's fine, because he feels so good that day. That's what he enjoys wearing, that's what makes him feel good. And the fact that he gets to choose himself raises his self-esteem, okay, which is so important. Um, give them a few choices of activities on your shelves. If you can't have as many naturally as a classroom, at least offer them a variety of activities and let them choose what they want to. You know what happens when we as mothers set up our shelves, and I've been there as well, we are very keen for our children
to work with the activities that we think they would like, that we think are really great. And when they don't, then you know we get a little upset and we kind of push them to do those activities. It's fine. They will get there. When you give them the time to explore and try, they, they need to internalize this freedom and understand that nobody's going to force me or push me to do something. You will see by yourself that they will get to every material and they will spend time with concentration working with that material, which is way better than us pushing them into doing something. Have you ever thought of giving your child the freedom to choose what kind of breakfast he wants that day? Give him a couple of choices, two or three choices. Would you like pancakes? Would you like to have cereal? Would you like to have a sandwich? And let him choose. They need to understand that they have the freedom to make choices in every area of life. That's what makes them self-confident. Make your home, make your Montessori environment a safe place, as safe as possible, so your children have the freedom to move without asking you for assistant constant, assistance constantly. Uh, for example, in your bathroom and your kitchen, keep little step stools that they can use to wash their hands, to brush their teeth, to get a glass of water, to even rinse off their own dishes after they've had a meal, so that they are moving about without, you know, feeling that I can't do this, there's something I cannot do. You will be presenting materials to your child and many, many times, more often than not actually, they will use the materials in a different way than you actually presented it to them. And that's okay. That is something that they should have the freedom to do because they learn through discovery, they learn through exploration, so give them the freedom to explore and to try and to test the limits. I know that it can sometimes be hard because uh, we are conditioned to constantly coddle our children, protect them, uh, manage them, control them and things like that. Uh, sometimes because of our culture, sometimes because of the way we've been brought up. But give it a try. Just try. Baby steps. Give them little bits of freedom, freedom gradually, not everything at once, okay, but gradually give them freedom, keep extending it, keep expanding it, and I guarantee you, you will be so amazed by the results you will see, how your child is growing in self-confidence, how he's blossoming, how he's learning so much, you will be so happy. These are the wonderful benefits that uh, implementing a Montessori program, a Montessori uh, system the right way. This is what you will see. So I wish you luck. Send us feedback. Tell us how it's been for you. Drop me some comments under this video. If you have questions, you know I always tell you I love questions. I'm happy to answer them. Keep them coming and I will keep coming back to you with more information. So have a great day ahead. And I look forward to hearing from you.